Hello everyone, hope you're having a wonderful day today. Welcome to the Film Insight channel. In today's video, we're gonna discuss some restaurants featured on Restaurant Impossible and reveal if they're still open. So, sit back, relax, and without further ado, let's get right into the content, guys. Flood Tide. In a season one episode, the legendary Robert Irvine pays a visit to a restaurant called Flood Tide, hoping to save it from closing down. Once booming with business, the 50-year-old restaurant now has a horrible reputation and it's mostly because of the owner Jody Dyer. Having the same chef, Robert Tripp, for over two decades, she considers him a world-class chef, but that's up for debate. When Chef Irvine arrives, he points out that the decor is extremely dull and is unimpressed with the filthy exhibition kitchen. Inviting some guests over for the dinner service, they also criticize the decor and are unsure of what to get on the menu. What's more, the food takes extremely long to arrive, and when it does, it's either bland or overly seasoned. The lobster bisque and calamari disappoint the owner Jody, and it's soon revealed that the staff have never really tried the food themselves. Taking a closer look at the kitchen, Irvine finds grime caked on equipment which angers him deeply, but the staff takes responsibility and begins to clean things up. Hoping to be able to change the restaurant's reputation, Chef Irvine heads to a coffee shop to meet with some locals. It becomes clear that most feel like the food needs an update, is way too overpriced, and that the service is horrible. Due to these very poor testimonials, the Restaurant Impossible host begins to think that he won't be able to shift Flood Tide's reputation around. Still willing to try though, Irvine coaches the kitchen staff on ways to improve their menu with the equipment and ingredients they already have. Showing the owner the locals' opinions, he suggests that she rename the restaurant and she reluctantly changes it to the Wood Grill at Flood Tide. Asking the staff to sample the new food he suggested, Irvine is pleased to know that they enjoyed it. Upon the restaurant's eventual relaunch, the food is a humongous hit with the customers and the staff seem to be in order. Post the restaurant's appearance on the show, Jody expressed that she wasn't entirely happy with the outcome. While they did receive a minuscule boost in profits, it was not nearly enough to keep the restaurant afloat since she was still facing financial issues. Reviews were generally positive on TripAdvisor while the ones on Yelp were oddly mostly poor. Who knows why? In November of 2013, the restaurant ended up predictably closing down and the building was purchased for $5.35 million a bit more than a year later. Being completely reopened in June of 2014, the building was redecorated and renamed to Harbor House. Salt Works 2 Traveling all the way to Wilmington, North Carolina, Robert Irvine attempts to save a restaurant called Salt Works 2. Being a well-established restaurant, it was eventually purchased by best friends Michael and John 18 months before the episode was recorded. However, they have no experience with running a restaurant, which has led to their expected downfall. Not only did they keep the old menu and staff, but when their kitchen equipment broke, they sunk all their money into fixing it. Upon Irvine's arrival to this failing business, he samples a collection of dishes while speaking to the customers and looking at their meals. When he's finally served the food he ordered, it's absolutely revolting how old and salty the chicken is and how generally bland the food tasted. Admittedly, the kitchen staff isn't happy with the food either, not being able to name a single item on the menu that isn't canned or frozen. Unimpressed with their laziness, Chef Irvine expresses that he can make fresh gravy for cheaper than the $10 canned gravy they own. Speaking with a designer, Irvine plans to introduce bar and wine sales into the restaurant to boost its profitability. Interestingly enough though, rather than shift the blame onto the staff, the owners were completely fine with accepting that their failure lies in their poor leadership. Giving the staff a challenge, Chef Irvine asked them to build furniture that will later be used in the restaurant to test their teamwork. As they worked on that, the dining room was repainted and the counter replaced, while Irvine and those in the kitchen learned how to make the new menu items. In order to choose who the next executive chef will be, a cook-off challenge is held and Chef Frank admits that his co-worker Jimmy's food is delicious and out of his league, so he's offered the position. Testing the staff on if they know the new menu items, Irvine gives them a new t-shirt if they could recite them all. Eventually, Michael and John get to see their new restaurant and fall in love with the updated decor. Throughout the relaunch, even if things didn't go perfectly, the customers were very pleased with their meals and promised a return. After Irvine left, the restaurant received pretty decent reviews, which was immensely improved in late 2014 to 2015. What the owners expressed changed the most since appearing on the show was they were always busy and even had younger customers coming to test the food. Although in the end, the restaurant closed down in November of 2015, not before posting a statement on their Facebook page. It read, well, today's a sad day for most of the Saltworks 2 family. Today was our last day to be open for business. It's been one heck of a run, but sadly it must come to an end. 
Due to the loss of some key employees midday today, we cannot staff accordingly. Two years later, the restaurant was sold for $660,000. Secret Garden Cafe Located in Jacksonville, Florida, the Secret Garden Cafe is a restaurant that Chef Robert Irvine decided to try and rescue. Owned by Zach Nettles and Michael Williams for over six years, they're in deep debt and are only able to stay open for another three months. This is simply due to the fact that their food costs are out of control and their embarrassing lack of clientele. On top of this, both of the owners have trouble agreeing with each other and haven't paid themselves since opening the restaurant. When the restaurant Impossible host arrives, he hates how the building is sectioned off and he attempts to remove the clutter from the wall. Wanting to sample the food, Irvine orders a couple of dishes from the menu which makes the owners begin to shout and argue with the staff. How odd. Some of the customers begin to complain about how the restaurant is cold and the owner rudely tells them to put on a coat. After a while, Irvine has served his order and it's poorly cooked with packet sauce covered in greens and horribly presented. The restaurant's chef, Ingo, doesn't take criticism very well so he makes fresh sauce and compares it to the pre-made one. It's obviously better. Reorganizing the kitchen, Chef Irvine moves the equipment as well as the fridge around and cuts out some windows. To ensure that implementing his new menu would go smoothly, the famous chef teaches them how to improve their skills. Later on, the owners head to a local radio station to get the word out about their newly reborn restaurant. Thankfully, the owners are pleased with the new color scheme and the cutout windows. Upon relaunch, everything was a hit with the customers who were eager to come back. Ever since Chef Irvine gave the restaurant a second chance, reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor have been amazing. The owners have expressed a 50% increase in sales since their appearance on the show, and they've seen a huge increase of traffic on their website. Supposedly, the restaurant doesn't open for dinner, but they were met with enough success to open a second location. Today, they're still open, but briefly shut down in 2017 after failing a health inspection due to a roach infestation from a faulty door. Meglio's Owned by a man named John Meglio, Meglio's is an Italian restaurant that opened five years prior to the taping of this season one episode. Being $250,000 in debt, Meglio has taken out a second mortgage and is very close to losing his business. Desperately needing some guidance before everything crashes down, Meglio calls out to Robert Irvine for some aid. When he arrives, despite struggling to get there, Irvine finds a wall that is filled with Luigi's nostalgia. Unimpressed with the drab decor and filthy ceiling, Chef Irvine reluctantly invites some guests to test the food. Also feeling disappointed with the restaurant, the guests also seem to hate the decor and how confused the servers are. While the pizza they ordered was actually surprisingly delicious, the rest of the meals they're served are disgusting. The staff don't even eat the food because they know that the kitchen has a lot of cross-contamination issues. Heading into the kitchen to investigate, Irvine finds tons of frozen food in the walk-in and urges the staff to remove it. To replace the disgusting food, Chef Irvine teaches the staff how to make his new dishes and they admit that this is the first time they've used fresh ingredients. With a plan to give the restaurant an aesthetic overhaul, the staff helps remove the clutter and half of the dividing wall. Upon the official relaunch, customers are impressed with the updated decor and food, and the returning guests are completely surprised. Since the Restaurant Impossible team left, reviews on Yelp and TripAdvisor have been very polarizing. As a result of the owner reverting back to a lot of his old ways, the restaurant inevitably closed down in January of 2015. Well, that'll be all for today's video here on the channel. I do hope you enjoyed, and if you did, be sure to drop a massive like down below and comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more content like this, and turn on those sweet bell notifications for instant access to our content. Have a good one, guys.